All right, hello everybody. I think a few people are starting to join the uh, the lobby. We're gonna get started at uh, probably a little just after the top of the hour to let folks trickle in. And I will shortly introduce our presenter, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, I'm going to go ahead and make you presenter so you can make sure your screen is uh, ready to share. All right, great, I see your screen. Here you go, Nate. Perfect. And then we do have two poll questions that I'm going to just leave open while people join. So this is our first poll question. Pretty simple. Hopefully let you know that you're in the right place today. <laughs> Do you currently have any EMC compliance issues? Or maybe this is just uh, informational, um, in which case it's, it's fine as well. So we'll leave this up for a while as people trickle in. All right, we're at the top of the hour. Emmanuel, let's give uh, maybe just one more minute for people to trickle in. All right. And for those that are just joining, we've got a simple poll up. We've got one more poll question before we get started. All right, folks are joining. I'm going to put up the second poll question. So more than half, about 60% currently have EMC issues, Emmanuel, just for your information. So everyone seems to be in the right place today. That's good. Yeah, good to know. Let's put up the next poll question and then we'll get started. Hopefully this is straightforward as well. I believe you can select multiple. So what kinds of tests are difficult for you to overcome with your current designs, your current design process? We'll keep this one open for a minute or so, and then uh, I'll get us started and introduce Emmanuel. Good results are coming in. Okay, so we've got more than half responded to the second poll. Emmanuel, so 60% um, have difficulty with conducted emissions. Oh, and more results okay. are coming in. Okay, it's updating, it's, it's live polling here. About half of the audience is both radiated and conducted emissions they're dealing with. Half of the audience also is dealing with ESD. And then uh, less than half, about a third or a quarter are dealing with the immunity issues. So thank you for um, participating in the poll. I'll go ahead and close that and let's get started here. So 
Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, CST Studio for Electronic Design for Electromagnetic Compatibility. My name is Nate Woodard, and I'm the Electromagnetics Business Development Manager here at Computer Aided Technology. And at Computer Aided Technology, we have a passion for helping our clients across multiple simulation physics dom domains. And today, we're excited to discuss a very powerful workflow within the CST suite of multi-physics solvers. So I'll be your host today for the hour that we have, and I'm going to introduce our distinguished presenter, Emmanuel LaRue. Um, we did the polls, so yeah, Emmanuel, I think uh, that helps you uh, understand who in the audience, um, what type of issues they're dealing with, and as you go through your presentation, uh, you know, we can, we can hone in on those specific issues with the uh, emissions and ESD being the most common from the audience. And so uh, I think with, uh, without further ado, let me introduce Dr. Emmanuel LaRoe, whose role at Dassault is Worldwide Industry Process Director focusing on electromagnetics. So Emmanuel, please take it from here. Thank you, Annette. Good morning, everybody. I'm glad we are going to talk about uh, electromagnetic compatibility. And this was the subject of my PhD thesis years ago. And I see that situation change a lot. Uh, thanks also to great software we can offer to you today. So uh, as an agenda, I propose is basically to concentrate on uh, two positions. First of all, the uh, pre-compliance electromagnetic compatibility simulation, uh, why it's so important and why it makes sense uh, to try it today. Uh, then I will show in a workflow that uh, um, at the end, uh, electromagnetic compatibility come as the last uh, momentum after signal and power integrity. And if you, if you miss the first one, for example, if you have a bad signal integrity, then you, have, you are going to have a bad EMC as well. So it, it's good uh, to, to think in terms of a workflow. I will show uh, what are our capabilities to import from the electronic CAD, the mechanical CAD, to get all what you need into the software to make a pre-compliance electromagnetic simulation. Then I will show that we can start basically with some rule, uh, rule checker, uh, DRC, which is really nice because without making any simulation, it allows you to check if the rules that have been uh, uh, thought for a digital PCB are applied well on, on your case. Then I will, uh, I will show uh, advantages of uh, applying these uh, electromagnetic pre-compliance. What are the, the strengths we have in our, in our tool for that? And I will run a practical case for you, which is conducted emissions. And uh, it fits well uh, to some of you that uh, indicate in the pool uh, questions that this is one of the things that is difficult to, to, to achieve. Then I will, uh, I will show that it's important uh, to run uh, sometimes uh, complex models made of uh, PCB case, eventually cables. So uh, an idea is maybe to run uh, your model on the cloud, and this is possible with electromagnetic engineer role on the 3D experience platform of the system. So we really talk about high performance computing on cloud, and it is an out of the box solution. So I want to, to show it to you so that you see you are really um, without limit in terms of uh, simulation for big model. So first of all, yes, I want to, to explain about uh, uh, what is electromagnetic compatibility. So the idea is that um, an electrical system, so it is a, a system made of PCB, a motor, antenna. It's not all about antenna only. Uh, it's, it's enough to have some something working with electricity. You will need to meet the electromagnetic compatibility normatives as the FCC limit in the US. And the, the, the objective is that you should not influence the surrounding devices. You, sh you should not perturb them. So this is all about emissions. And you should not be influenced by surrounding equipment. And this is all about immunity. And this is uh, really well regulated. There are some uh, normatives. And you must go for tests in a fancy place like an echoic chamber. And if you don't pass the test, you cannot put your product to the market. So it's really important to, to act as soon as possible. And sometimes automotive OEMs in particular impose even uh, more strict standards on components they buy from their vendors. 
so that uh, in order to, to, to sell to them, it's even more difficult than to pass the electromagnetic uh, normatives. It's important also to notice uh, the frequency range. So we have, I would say, uh, three parts. The first is about uh, inverters, voltage regulators, and so on. We are talking about kilohertz. Then we have the radio communication system. We have uh, megahertz. And then regarding uh, the, uh, the digital signal on PCBs with a very uh, short rise time that uh, provide uh, a spectrum that goes up to the gigahertz uh, bandwidth. And uh, so we are talking about high speed electronics. And also radar, we go to up to gigahertz. Now, uh, the question is, why do we need to do simulation at all? I mean, you could just do the test. This is why people are doing for 50 years now. The problem is that you need to have your prototype uh, fabricated first. And if you have an issue, uh, the mitigation can, can be achieved uh, calling uh, an expert that is going to fix uh, the issue. But it, it will take time, and you're going to come late, and maybe it will be too late for you. Your competitor will arrive before you. So you know this, this is not easy. And also, you depend on other parties, like uh, laboratories, and their availability to welcome you in their test room. Of course, the test is still needed in order to get the certification, but the virtual testing will allow you to get better prepared. And this is something that people are really doing from a decade. And I would say that the, the, the very nice uh, advantage that you have is that you can really see the invisible. In fact, um, you can see where the current is spreading, where the wave is be how the wave is behaving, and so you can really see. Yes, uh, I have an issue because of this wrong coupling through the metal plane and the V hole, and you can fix it, and you can discover why is the problem. So this is a unique capability, and it's not like in a mechanical simulation where uh, basically uh, you can have a feeling of what you are doing in principle in physical test. Here. If you do the physical testing and you fail, you have no clue about why. So the simulation is answering basically to the why question. And here we have a nice example of a DC-DC converter. And we see clearly that uh, if you just measure it, you are going to have the information if it pass or fail. But if you simulate it, you are able to handle the troubleshooting and understand that the issue is because of the wrong uh, coupling here on, the, on this net, which is uh, on the red color on the picture. As I said, it's very important to act as soon as possible and to offer a simulation um, as early as possible in the, in the design stage, uh, hopefully in the pre-layout. Huh? We have tools for pre-layout as well. I'm not going to show them today, but please note that we can also work at pre-layout pre level for the PCB. We don't need to wait that the PCB is already routed. And then, uh, the, 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 let, the later you go to make your action, the more cost it will engage for your product. And uh, it can be a disaster when you, can, you have really a short margin to, to make modification on your product to be compliant. So the, uh, the, the advantage of making simulation early process will help you to get on time for your product. So the workflow for electronic design analysis is made of uh, uh, this uh, typical spiral slide from the system where we start from importing the layout, for example, of a PCB, and we are doing a root checker to verify the, if the rules that have been uh, thought for this PCB are well uh, applied in, in practical. Then we have uh, some signal and power integrity, and this is something we discussed already uh, some time ago in the last uh, webinar, one of the last webinars with CATI, we had this, um, this uh, uh, webinar explaining how we run signal and power integrity. I'm, I'm not going to discuss it uh, further. But of course, then, at the end of the day, you need to compare the uh, radiated emission of your PCB, for example, with the normative, which is in red in the, in the picture. And um, uh, if you don't pass the test, then you need to mitigate. And actually, what you're going to test is not the PCB alone. You, you need to make a virtual twin of your product. So you will import the PCB, the case, eventually the cables, and you're going to make the simulation. Therefore, you need to make a model. And here, uh, regarding import and export uh, from the 
from the PCB, what I can say is that we are compatible with all the major players in the market, like Cadence, Zuken, Antium, Mentographics, and we can read as well uh, the, uh, the neutral file like uh, ODB++ and IPC2581. On the mechanical side, of course, we have a great connection with SOLIDWORKS, as you know, with Electromagnetic Engineer, we have a great associativity, but we are able to import as well files from those other vendors. So Autodesk, uh, Creo, Siemens NX, and so on, as well as a standard file, Step or IHS. Let's have a deep dive now on the uh, design rule check. If you have some questions, uh, you can interrupt me, uh, Nate, okay? Yeah, I think we're, uh, we're all set for now, but just a reminder to everybody, if you want to submit questions, you can do so via chat, or also there's a, a questions tab in the control panel. You can submit uh, privately to me and we will have Emmanuel address as they come in and we'll also have some time at the end. Thank you, Emmanuel. Good. So here, uh, the basic idea is that uh, if you have some critical nets on your PCB, uh, DDR parallel buses, for example, DDR4, uh, quick serial uh, signals that use B3, and sensible uh, devices like, like low voltage devices, at the end of the day, if you do not well your SI signal integrity and PI power integrity, you are going to have issues in terms of EMC limits. Therefore, it's very important to make, first of all, a screening of the PCB to understand if you are well set. And here, we have been working with IBM, and in particular with Bruce Archambault, a great guy that was uh, developing these uh, rules to check the digital PCB. We incorporated these uh, this uh, rule checker into our software and we are able basically to check if for example you are routing uh, a net which is too near the border of the pcb here in black on the picture which is not a good idea because at that point you know when you have a microstrip the quasi tem mode has to uh, couple to the metal plane in a symmetric way but if you have a net too near to the metal plane a border it will not happen like that. You will have common mode current uh, turning in your metal plane, which will, will rise some radiated emissions. So what we do, we tag the nets, we name them, uh, because we know here you have a, a certain USB signal, for example, or we, we, we net, we, we, we define what kind of signal we have for the critical nets. We tag the components, for example, the decoupling capacitors, and we run the rule checker so that a screening will be done, no simulation at all. So it's very quick. And you obtain basically some violations. And here are all the enfin, part of the, of the rules that can be uh, checked. For example, I like that one where you have a, a quick signal going through um, your PCB. And at a certain point, you have a hole on the metal plane. And it's clear that if you have a high speed signal, the return current will have to avoid the, the hole. And this will create a transfer inductance leading to common mode uh, radiated emissions. So all those rules can be checked in a, in a very quickly. Let's have an example of, of how it works with power integrity. And here, I want basically to check if I have enough decoupling capacitor on the PCB. So on the left, you have the original PCB where I have highlighted with the dotted line that in fact, I have some violations huh, uh, that have been found by the, the design rule checker. And those violations are critical. So we need to act. And this is what we do on the right. We add some decoupling capacitor. These are those circles over there. And the result is that we have fewer violations after that. So you see, this work helps you to prepare the, the work for, 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 for your simulation. Without making any simulation, you are able to enhance your PCB, not only for signal integrity rules, but also for EMI, electromagnetic emissions. Right. So what is the value now of a pre-compliance serious 3D EMC simulation? I will start with a comparison with measurement because this is the dream everything of us has. And this is what has been achieved, for example, for this DC-DC converter you see on the pictures that convert the 12 volt automotive to five volt for USB. 
And this is uh, great to see an excellent mesh for the uh, match between measurement and simulation regarding the conducted emission test. Alors, this is not that you can get that, I would say, without efforts. You will see in my presentation later on that you need to, uh, to make a good model of your uh, system. Uh, you will have to, measure, measure, uh, to model also the test setup and you have to insert the schematic into our software. So you, you need to make some effort, but it's pay, it pays off because you can predict then uh, the, the, the conducted emission in a very precise way. You will see uh, later on on my slides that we don't reach this situation for all the possible tests because the level of maturity for radiated uh, and conducted emissions and immunity is not the same for all the, the tests. There are tests that we are very mature. We can really predict if we have a good model, uh, the absolute value. In other case, we can just optimize the design to go in the right direction so that we, you are better prepared to pass the test uh, in, during the measurement. But we cannot dream to have the absolute uh, value as a target. So it depends a little bit on the, on the target. Another very important uh, uh, point, and I want to, 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 to cite our customer EASIC, that very often you need to simulate a system. Uh, here, in this case, we have a, a package that is uh, mounted on a PCB. And it's very important, you know, to simulate the system as a wall and to be able to, to handle it from the, the, the mesh perspective. And here, this is what is achieved with a very uh, great uh, fidelity up to 40 gigahertz. This, this, this is really where our simulation capability excel in the time domain solver, where we are able really to mesh very, very big models. Huh? Last day, I had a customer that gave me a 60 layers, 6-0, I'm jo not joking, huh? a Cadence Allegro 60 layer file that we have been able to import and mesh in 20 minutes. Come on, it's just great. And uh, the point is that really be able also to simulate with GPU, which are the graphic power unit, you know, the, from NVIDIA uh, that are used also for gaming, uh, to accelerate the simulation. So that this simulation will not take one day, but will take maybe uh, one hour and a half. So this is really nice. This is what, uh, where we excel. Then, uh, looking at what uh, Fuji Xerox uh, did with our software, we understand that uh, when you, you, you want, for example, to simulate a printer, it's not all about PCB. As I said before, you need to uh, to handle also the, the PCB and the frame of the printer in that case. And it's a big simulation. And here, the, the topic is that the software can use really to reduce the number of physical prototypes needed that shorted the design process. At the end of the day, we obtain basically what you need. We have uh, on the right hand here uh, an array of fit probe on the spherical grid around the device on the test that give you the single value in the single simulation. Then, as you may know, when you make your simulation, um, you would need, if you want to, to do the same as the, in the measurement, hein, if you go to an echoic chamber and you, you position your antenna, your log periodic antenna at three meters from the device that is put on the wooden table, you need to move the antenna at several height and you need to get the maximum of the feed for the two polarization, E and H. So if we do so with the software, yeah, it will lead to a lot of simulation. So what we just do, we run a cylindrical near-field scan that uh, basically uh, does not require you to, uh, to do, uh, move the antenna. And at the end, we obtain with one single post-processing step all the results we need. So I think it is big value. And let's have a look now on how we can help you to set up your simulation process inside the software. So here are basically common EMC standards that exist, okay? Uh, we have, uh, I will start uh, from uh, uh, the, 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 the first one when we have the radiated emissions. And um, uh, the, for example, the SHIST 25, where you have the very often a frequency uh, spectrum to, to tackle between 30 megahertz and one gigahertz and you have a measured field at one or three meter distance. Here, I would say that the simulation maturity is good and we have really, uh, we can really enhance your design, discover 
where you have an issue on your PCB that uh, uh, goes to, to radiated emission because we simulate the PCB in 3D. This is unique. You understand? We don't simulate, you know, that uh, it's not a spice simulation where we are going to hypothesis uh, the, the ground as a zero logic. You see the PCB in 3D and you can simulate the coupling with the metallic floor of the semi anechoic chamber, which is essential to predict the conductor emission. Regarding immunity, uh, we have good, uh, good progress. We made good progress in the last years regarding bulk current injection. Uh, here we have really made a good progress. We have model for the injection probe and so on. It's good. And also uh, regarding the DC-DC converter conducted emission as well. So I would say here we can make a good work. What is a bit more complicated is the radiated immunity. And in that case, sometimes, you know, you know, you, we can provide some, uh, some inputs, for example, the, 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 val the value of the voltage at the pin of the integrated circuit that suffer from a wave that is coming on top of the PCB, for example. And this kind of thing, I would say, you need to know if this level of voltage is critical for your component. So you need basically to look to the data sheet and to understand if it's going to change of state. So it's not as out of the box as the other cases. So um, I would say that uh, we cannot say, yes, we can predict uh, all those normatives uh, in absolute value. In some cases, if you do a good model, like the conductor emission, we are, we are going to predict it very well. In other cases, we can guide you to enhance your, your PCB design and the positioning of the PCB in the, in the, in the case. Uh, I noted, I noticed uh, net that uh, some of the people in the call are, are involved in electrostatic discharge, and I'm glad to show. You see the, the small model over there on the right. That is something that we implemented recently as a further update of what we have been doing for years. Uh, many of our customers are using uh, CST Studio for electrostatic discharge immunity, and uh, so we can do it basically uh, direct discharge and indirect with a metal plane, with horizontal plane, I mean, we, we can do very nice jobs there as well. So what do you need to do, uh, for example, a tabletop testing simulation? You need information from the PCB, the DB++, for the passive part, for the layout. We need, the, uh, of course, uh, the, uh, some material data that may, we may miss if we don't uh, have them in the, in the ODB. We need the circuit. It's very important, the circuit setup. So uh, we need to look at the source, the source of emission. And this source has to be modeled somehow. Uh, so it's important to, to, to model that into our design studio, which is our schematic editor. Then we are going to import the housing, for example, from SOLIDWORKS. Then we are going to um, position the setup. Uh, the PCB will be put at a certain distance from a wooden table. So we need to put that in the condition. And then we have some test protocols that have to be uh, replicated. For example, the antenna that has to move from one to four, to, to, to four meters, and you take the maximum of the field. So the, the goal we have is to help you. And this is what started two years ago. We started to implement in the Vizard that you may know about CST Studio. And if you click on the source button of this compass over there, you have the EMC EMI button. And you flick, if you click on it, you can choose what kind of analysis you want to do. And now, for example, in the case of a radiated emission for CHISP 25 normative, we, 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 we are going to place this for you, which is basically uh, the table that is ready for you to put on the blue area your product. And we have some probes, which are the green uh, arrows over there, where we are going to collect the information. So you see, we are going to prepare the field so that you don't have to build that every time you need to, go, to do a radiated emission test. So we are trying to complete that for many cases. It's not complete yet, but uh, some new features are going to arrive in the 23G version. What kind of output do we get? We get, depending on the test you do, for radiated emission, we get the electric field at a certain distance in dB microvolt per meter so that you can easily compare with the normative. For radiated immunity, we are going, for example, to, to, to evaluate the shield effectiveness of an enclosure, or we are going to see what happens if you do a bulk induction current testing. Right. 
So now, if there are no questions, I can also stop a bit, uh, answer to some questions before I'm going now to deep dive on, on, on one particular case for conducted emission, Nate. Yeah, Emmanuel, there, there are uh, questions here. So um, I'll just read them off. There's two, so I'll do one at a time. Can multiple board systems be analyzed? Yeah, it's a very good, uh, very good question. Yes, we can in the uh, time domain solver. We can do a simultaneous excitation where different ports are going to be excited, excited in the same time or with a certain delay between them. So you, you may imagine to have your mobile phone with some digital signal spreading on the PCB nets. And on top, you have the electrostatic discharge gun that is discharging on the PCB as it is working. So we do that, which is really uh, real life. Huh? It's, it's amazing because we can see really in, in simultaneously the effect. We can have several effects, several kind of source together. Great. And then the second question, is there a limitation for number of boards, board orientation compared to other boards and or the size of the overall system assembly? Okay. And of course, all depend on the on the memory you have, the memory RAM you have on your on your on your laptop on your machine. Uh, if you don't use the, the cloud that I will show in the last slide of the session today, uh, the if you have an assembly made of several an assembly containing uh, several multi multi PCB, of course, you will have a bigger model. So you will not, you will need more RAM memory to solve. Please take into account that the time domain solver. Uh, request memory in a linear way compared to the mesh cells because we solve the equations in an explicit way. We don't need to inverse any matrix. So in that case, it's very nice because we, we can really get the, the, the results in the time domain uh, for your simulation uh, without demanding extra RAM. So this is, uh, this is clear. Regarding the position of the ports, uh, sometimes we need to have them align with the mesh, so we need to, to move a little bit the model. So yes, sometimes some preparation is needed uh, to ease, I would say, to tune the performance of the of the simulation in term, in in in, uh, in sense of time. Thank you, Emmanuel. Can I proceed? Yes, yeah, so let's get started with this uh, practical case. We are talking about a conducted emission test. So you have basically uh, two uh, fixed PCB, one and two, connected with a flex PCB here. And you have a source, uh, which is a switching modules that is going to induce some current, you know, outside of the network. And of course, we, we should not allow that. So we need to test it from a conducted emission uh, standpoint. So we are going to put the device under test uh, connected with uh, two cables uh, to a LISN, which is an impedance whose characteristics are given by the normatives. And we are going to measure with the receiver what are the EMI. So this is the, basically the principle of the conducted emission test that we are doing. So what do you need to, to, to do this kind of uh, of model. So first of all, of course, you need the 3D geometry. So you are going to import from your Allegro or your uh, Altium designer the, the, the board, okay, to, uh, to have it inside of software. You are going also to, to add basically the, 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 the LISN because the LISN is uh, what we have in the, in, the, in the physical test. The PCB will be connected to a LISN. So you are going to add it. And what we need to do inside the design studio, which is the schematic editor we have inside our software, we need to implement the schematic of the relevant part of the board. That means, especially here for the switching part, we are going really to, uh, to, to, to implement the schematic. Uh, please note that uh, uh, we can use different kind of uh, macro model. We can use spice models, touch tone models, in certain cases, more for signal integrity, of course, application, we have IBIS, IMI, and Edge Spice model encrypted can be used as well in the, in the, in the schematic level. And the, 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 the objective is really 
to implement you know the switching mode here for this uh, switching uh, device then of course you obtain a model which is pretty big in design studio you have your pcb physical passive element uh, with all those red dots that are the ports where you connect some lumped element implemented into the schematic uh, you see over there where you have the switch you have the load you have the capacitor the decoupling capacitors you have a spice model and you have the lens the lens is the blue stuff over there in, in in the in the which is below okay and uh, we are going really to simulate uh, it will be a, a combination the, the the combination of uh, i would say of uh, of 3d simulation in the frequency domain in that case because we want to tackle you know the conducted emission and we are going to connect with uh, with switching mode so we are not going to run in uh, in time domain for that case and what we obtain as a result is basically a spectrum we have two cables so we have two lines and you have in red uh, the conducted emissions up to 200 megahertz uh, that is really high it's uh, above the normative and if you had decoupling capacitor i will show you in the next slide where you get the blue curve and you can appreciate the difference especially after 60 gigahertz that you were going over the normative uh, you are getting really nice uh, uh, cool down, I would say, of uh, the conducted emissions. And here we see practically the effect at 85 gigahertz for the electric field, including uh, the decoupling capacitor at the uh, blue, light blue uh, circle. You see, this is where I added decoupling capacitor. The situation is not red anymore. It's much stabilized. And this, this is how you can really mitigate and enhance your conducted emission results. So it works with relative analysis. Huh? You can either uh, go to the PCB layout, insert your capacitor, and import the PCB again. We do it in a very nice way using the new collaborator uh, designer with Altium designer and with Scanner Allegro. This is a new role available on the Solid Experience platform. It allows you basically to let the a designer of the PCB and the electronic engineer to collaborate together on the platform on the cloud. And it's very nice because the wet analysis is made at the PCB level and you don't need to build your PCB again. Everything gets uh, updated automatically. It's what I call mod, mod sim, modeling simulation for electronics. And this is what I, I showed in the first uh, uh, webinar with CATI uh, two weeks ago. Then, after you, you did that, uh, it's not all, because sometimes, you know, you have your case. Uh, your case can be metallic uh, to shield. And uh, in that case, I have uh, my case that is basically, with, uh, it contains a cover. I have a cover that I will, I'm going to apply, and there are some screws that I can put if I like. But for the moment, I don't put any, any screw. So I have basically, uh, uh, I need to calculate the shield effectiveness. So what happened if I put the PCB inside of the case of the metallic enclosure? Will I get less radiated emission? Will that help me or not? The answer is not that trivial because, of course, for most of the bandwidths from 30 to 1,000 megahertz, you have uh, basically your radiated emission, uh, I would say, uh, from the PCB alone, that is much more than when the PCB is inside the box in blue here. Uh, we have uh, 20 dB of difference, even more sometimes. But at this frequency, at 480 MHz, we have an issue. We have a resonance, and uh, the emissions of the PCB inside the box are even higher than the PCB alone. Cannot be. <laughs> It results, if you see here, of the red dots, is because of the slot resonance. In fact, as I told you, this is a cover I'm going to apply. And I did not put so, any screw before. And of course, in certain cases, you have, uh, through the slot, some radiated emission. So here, what we, uh, what we can do, we can uh, add the screw at the four position. This is the cylinder you can see here in the picture. Or you can try to use some LF gasket. And if you do see uh, the red curve, enclosure, and screw, we get rid of the resonance now. It works. 
So you see the software is able uh, not only to work at the PCB level, but to work at the case level and really optimize the design and how people need to shield or to ground. Uh, some, some customers buy CST only for grounding studies. Uh, I have a, a system, I want to put my system to ground on different places. Is it good or not? We can really study those grounding uh, configurations. Right, so I am open for other questions before I proceed with SPC on cloud, Nate. Nope, oh, we're doing okay. Good. So, as I said before, your simulation can be achieved, which is already a good news. Uh, if, you, if you consider this uh, system made of uh, two PCB and one flex PCB, it's a big model. Uh, if you see, 43 billion of mesh cells in the time domain. It's a huge model. And uh, I'm talking about billion, not million. So imagine uh, other software cannot simulate such a stuff. Huh? We, we must be in the time domain here to do that. And uh, basically, it takes four hours to, uh, to come to a simulation on my uh, computer with six cores. And I'm using uh, eight generation of uh, i7 uh, core Lenovo computer. OK. Four hours. I want to optimize this because maybe I want to add a decoupling capacitor. Alors each time you, you had, sometimes you can also work at the schematic level. You don't need to simulate again all the system. You press an update, it's going to update only the schematic part. So it does not mean that the 3D model has to run again. But sometimes, yes, uh, depend on what, what you do in terms of what if analysis. But if you, if you need to, for example, from the question before that we run everything together, the ESD gun, the digital net, I mean, sometimes, yeah, we, we need to, to run it again. And four hours is too much. So what I do, I'm going to run with 16 core, which is the maximum load with electromagnetic engineer hall on the Swede Experience platform. And you get basically, your simulation done in one hour, 43 minutes, which is great. And you don't need to pay extra if you, uh, if you use uh, the cloud to run your model. But if it is still too long for you, what you can do, you can buy the flower over there, the nice colored flower, which is the Simulia Simunit and Token, which is basically to buy uh, more power, more HPC power on cloud in terms of course, in terms of GPUs, <laughs> and you can uh, buy them from uh, forever for your license or for one year if you are renting the license, or you can also buy some credits that you are going to spend uh, only in one month's time, for example. So it's very flexible. And here what you get is that using 24 cores for GPU, you bring down the simulation time to 23 minutes. So it, come, it becomes very interesting. Therefore, you will be able to make what-if analysis in a, in, a, in a quicker way and to enhance your design. Right. So my conclusion for today would be uh, to tell you that virtual uh, AMC, electromagnetic compatibility, uh, process simulation should be incorporated into the product development process as early as possible in the design phase. It's now a trend. It offers tremendous value and savings. Huh? It's not a nice to have. Uh, when I started, I remember years ago, I finished my PhD in 98, meeting customers beginning of 2000. People were, were trying to simulate PCB systems and so on. Now it's really we have mature uh, simulation tools that allow you to make savings. Uh, that's the system, Simula CST Studio Suite on premise, or its flavor on the cloud, electromagnetic engineer on the 3D experience platform, is really the best in class simulation tool to realize uh, electromagnetic compatibility uh, virtual testing. The reason is really because of the uh, simulation engine we have inside, we can run in the time domain, we can simulate several uh, sources together. And um, many of those effects, you know, in the normative, if you imagine, um, uh, for example, excitation from a lightning strike that fall on an aircraft, for example, it was, it's a transient phenomena. 
So if you simulate in the time domain, you are sure you are going to collect the right information. So we, uh, I think that the method that we use is really well, well suited. And um, we are really leading in this area also because we have not only the time domain, we have the frequency domain, like the one we use for the conducted emission test that was best suited for that application. So we have several solvers and we use the best one depending on the application you have. And we, we can guide you basically. We have in the Vizart the capability uh, to, 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 to prepare the simulation setup uh, to, mimite, to, 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 uh, to mimic a little bit the, the test environment and not for all normatives. Uh, we just started to do that. And uh, we can really uh, try to make a, a, a optimization of your, of your design. So I think it's a, it's a very nice uh, way to, 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 to proceed. And this can work in a very nice uh, time, very short time, if you use GPU, uh, the graphical power unit, and we come to very, very uh, short simulation time. So I would say that I finish uh, my, my presentation and I'm open for your questions. Yeah, thank you, Emmanuel. That was great. We do have a few questions that came in here at the uh, the end here. So um, I'll just go from top to bottom. How can we manage cables into an EMC simulation? Yeah, it's an important question. As I said, the, the OEM that has to sell a product on the market, he has to certify the, the complete product. So he will not put the PCB on the wooden table to measure the radiated emission. He will put the full model, uh, the full product made of uh, the, 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 the enclosure, the cables eventually. And I remember when I was making measurement in an echoic chamber, I was moving a cable and all the all the, the, the spectrum was, was, was changing on the, on the receiver, I remember. So cables position are very important because cables sometimes act as antenna. Uh, for example, when they are, if the shield of a cable is connected to the ground plane and you have uh, ground bounds on it, yeah, it's an antenna. So it's very important to understand that. So what we offer you is in our suite, we have Cable Studio. Cable Studio is a tool uh, completely integrated into CST Studio Suite or Electromagnetic Engineer that allow first of all to import a cable bundle. Or you can design them in, in the tool if you like, but you can import them. And for that, we can import the KBL format that is used in automotive. We can import, of course, Katia. And uh, also, we uh, can import the external uh, cylinder containing the, the cables in XML format. If you are not using uh, uh, those tools, uh, uh, and so at the end we can import them, but usually we don't. Uh, so you import them, and we are going to solve them with the transmission line method. So we are going to see the topology of the cables for each uh, rectilinear piece. We are going to calculate uh, the cross section, and we are going to associate uh, a model to do a transmission line analysis, and this kind of uh, topological 2D and a half uh, tool is going to be connected with Design Studio, the circuit uh, simulator, and also with the 3D EM simulation, so that we combine all of them together uh, to exchange voltage and tension, and uh, voltage and current, sorry. Uh, tension is French. <laughs> uh, so at the end of the day, we have an hybrid method. And the answer of electromagnetic compatibility is still to have hybrid methods. Hybrid methods are needed. This is the only way you can handle a system made of cables, PCB, and case. Because, guys, we are not to, going to mesh every cables. It makes no sense. Some of our competitors do that. It is really no sense. We need a hybrid method. And this is what we apply. And we can also teach you in order to have a realistic model. Because it makes no sense, you know, to import all the cables, all the PCB traces, to have an enormous model that will run forever. We can uh, coach you in order that you are going to import maybe some cables, not all of them, and uh, to make a simulation on a model that will evolve step by step. So th this is really something we tried out. We have a great methodology in our company. We can teach you because a software is nothing without a methodology on how to use it, especially in electromagnetic compatibility. So we can really share with you our methods. Great, thank you. One more question. Can you set enclosures or other conductive mechanical components to different voltage values? For instance, uh, for instance, a battery pack with multiple cells. 
I see. Yes. So sometimes uh, you, you need you need you have some different level of voltage on the PCB. Uh, you can, for example, have the low 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 voltage device. You have five volt. You have different level. So yes, you can in the PCB studio uh, precise when you do your power and integrity analysis, for example, different level of voltage and understand uh, the uh, power integrity quality uh, uh, depending on those different levels, yes. All right, great. Well, that does it for all the questions, Emmanuel. So thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you everybody for attending today's webinar. And um, this uh, concludes the webinar. So have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Emmanuel. Thank you. Bye-bye.